So I teach English, not something technical, if I'm a technical expert. Well, after all of my travels and all of the opportunities that I had to work with non-native English speaking um, geologists, laboratory technicians, executives, it became really clear to me that the biggest game-changing skill um, that they could get was in fact speaking English and communication. So their technical skills were pretty good. We've all been to university and we've all learned the basics at university and there's lots of workplace um, development programs available for uh, improving hazard ID, systems, um, engineering systems, statistical analysis, but I've not yet seen a program for improving English communication. And yet this is one of the core skills that every person in the mining industry needs to have. And so if it's a core skill and if the gap analysis suggests that someone could improve their English and see the benefits, where do they go? To a general English course or to a business English course? I mean, they're good starting points, but they're not going to give you the transformation in your career necessarily that you are looking for or that you could get real benefit from. And so I saw a need. I saw how people's worlds shifted when they closed that gap. I have been very fortunate to work with some incredibly intelligent people. And the ones that improved their English communication skills for the workplace, they are doing amazing things, really powerful things. I love to stay connected and see what they're up to. And yet, there were some people out there who are just as strong technically, maybe even more so, I'm not sure, but they didn't speak in English. Usually fear, fear of making mistakes, fear of, of being humiliated, maybe. But as a result, their careers didn't go where they needed them to go or where they could have gone and they're stuck doing the same job they were doing 10, 20 years ago, not seeing any advancement um, and being at risk. If one mine shuts down, how do, they, how do they get another job in another mine, in another location? Even if you're not looking for those, those international um, opportunities. So, that's why English. That's why I went back to study how to teach English. Um, and that's why I transitioned into doing what I'm doing now. Okay, so what do I think the difference is between people who succeed at this and people who don't quite get there? I think it's really simple and it comes down to one, two things, two aspects of the same thing. And that is determination and resilience. So determination, because you have to want this. You have to want it, um, even though the journey will be hard. You have to want it even though it's going to cost you some things. You have to want it enough to keep working at it. That determination is key. Even when it's not fun, you have to do it. But you have to find it fun most of the time or you're not going to have the determination. And resilience. So resilience is having that internal strength to overcome the challenges and the hurdles when they come. So it's not enough to just want them, but you have to have something deeper, something um, 
that sets you apart from from other people in the sense that you can't be swayed by setbacks you can't see failure as an end point we all fail i failed i failed many times in the journey but i've not failed in the destination i got there eventually so when you come across a roadblock when you come across a hurdle you have to find a way around it and that is resilience so you need the determination you need to be a little bit stubborn i certainly am um, but more than that, you also need to be resilient and creative and find a way around your roadblock. And that's it. It's not about smart enough. It's not about intelligence. It is about stubborn and creative. Okay, so number two question that I most often get asked would be, how can I tell if someone has the real potential to, to succeed. Okay, so would I ever returning to be a metallurgist? process engineer, senior process engineer, geologist, geochemist, development chemist, any of those things that I have been throughout my career, uh, would I return to being any of those again? Never say never, right? Um, at this point in time, there's absolutely zero intention on my end to returning to that field. I did love it. I do love it. I, I don't love doing it now because I'm not doing it. Um, but it was something that I really enjoyed doing. So circumstances changed. Um, I uh, no longer had the amount of time available once I became a mum. Um, to work after hours on the crisis moments as they happened in the plant, getting out there in the trenches with the guys, trying to recover whatever circuit needed recovering. Um, but also I had met most of those challenges head on and won every time. I guess the interest in continuing those challenges decreased a little bit, but more so, I really found myself enjoying watching other people get their wings grow, take on the challenges. Um, that became my real passion. So I've watched a number of people, you know, overcome the hurdles that were holding them back and realise the dreams that they were doubting they would ever be able to achieve. And those things made me more proud, more um, satisfied with the amount of work that I was putting in. So I can honestly say I don't work less hours now. Uh, my schedule is not nine to five, Monday to Friday, or on a regular shift pattern anymore. Um, I'm pretty much always working in some capacity juggling lots and lots of different things um so i i enjoy this every minute of doing this i enjoy sometimes i'm terrified um but mostly it's pure enjoyment and for now i can't see myself doing anything else so i don't see myself ever going back to working as a process engineer or met but never say never. I have had some job offers recently that were really hard to say no to. Um, so who knows? Maybe that offer that sparks the passion to get back into it uh, comes and I, am, and I go back. But no, it is not my intention today. Um. 
So I'm often asked, what has been the highlight of my career? And that is really, really, really hard to answer. I've had so many highlights in my career. Um, even the lowlights, I think, became highlights ultimately. So I guess just to name a few moments of um, note in my career, I have, I guess, one of the one of the things that I have to acknowledge is when I was heavily supported by a team of mentors um, in returning to university. So I was working um, as a laboratory coordinator and I had the full support of a number of the senior technical team in returning to university, getting an honours in chemistry. I was qualified in geology at that point. Um, and it took us a year to get that project off the ground. There was a lot of uh, mentoring for me to understand how to do this. A lot of support with the industry and the university, finding supervisors, overcoming the challenges, getting the company to support the project. Um, and so that was an ultimate highlight. And completing the project, there were challenges, there were times where I, I doubted that it was going to happen, not from me. Um, it was coming into the GFC and things were shifting pretty, pretty challengingly. Uh, so yeah, we, we got there. All of us got there through a sheer team effort and collaboration and support. So that has to be a highlight. Um, another highlight was getting the opportunity to go and travel in the remote jungles of Indonesia, in really remote parts of the Philippines, going and seeing the guys at the coal face, so to speak, at the, this was nickel, at the nickel face, in the trenches, doing the digging, doing the stockpiling, and finding ways to collaborate on um, all preparation to feed to a processing facility I was working at. Um, I think that started my love for this mentoring and language teaching because communication during those situations is key and these guys were bright and excited and passionate and have gone on to some pretty amazing careers themselves. So that absolutely has to be a highlight. A low light, working uh, at Ranger Uranium Mine during a tank collapse event was a definite low light that I think became a highlight for all of us who were there. We learnt new skills, we faced adversity and challenges, we overcame them, we learned resilience and we learnt the value of process safety firsthand. No one was hurt, the systems there were excellent and they worked and that validated why what we did was so important. And I think everyone who was involved in that event will say that was a low light that had absolute highlights to it. And then absolutely the opportunity of working in Malaysia. Um, there were challenging, challenging times during that placement. But again, um, they, they were profound learnings and some of those learnings shook my confidence and then it was only through facing the challenges and um, overcoming those hurdles that that my confidence was restored. So um, absolutely that was a pivotal moment in my career and one that I will be forever grateful uh, for having. And maybe I'll make a video in another five years time with some more amazing highlights. They are certainly not the sum total of the highlights um, of my career, but they were some points of note to share. Uh, so I hope that answered that question. All right, so I have had quite a few questions recently about my strategy sessions. What are they and why do I hold them? So a strategy session is just a quick 
30, 40 minute chat where I try to get a better understanding about what it is that you need, what level you're at at the moment, what is your most pressing urgency. And then I can come up with some uh, strategies for you to be able to see some rapid improvement. So for example, um, one of the questions that I ask is, what level are you at at the moment? And obviously not everyone knows that. So there is a placement test that I offer for free just so that you can get an understanding of what level you're at now. And then where do you want to go? What is it that you want to address? Is it job interviews? Is it presenting at work? Is it, you know, what is it that is the first thing you need to see improvement in? And then the questions get a little bit more tricky. So what I'm looking for is information about your learning style. What has worked for you in the past? What did you like? What did you not like? So that I can help present as many offers, opportunities as I see would be helpful to you. So if you are someone who likes to study alone, who is very motivated and very disciplined, then self-study might be the way to go. It's flexible, it's cheaper, and there's a number of options that you have for that. Build your own program, work on your own. I can certainly help identify some of the materials that are uh, reliable and, and give you some guidance in that process. Um, some people, it's an online self-study course. You still have the flexibility, but the program has been tailored by me in a systematic approach going forward. But there's no locked in um, schedule where you have to be present at this time on this day. And if you're sick, then we need to reorganize. If your kids are sick, if your work calls you in. So there's that really uh, beneficial option but sometimes the, the, the people who are asking for these sessions or asking for assistance they need a lot more direction in speaking and so then we've got to get face to face and there's the option of group classes or one on one the group classes are only available if there's a number of people who are at the similar level and available at the same time for a schedule. So they can be a bit tricky to get organised, um, but I've certainly done them. And the most popular one is the one on YouTube. So I will do the program for you for that purpose on that point that you are looking to improve. And we go through, I try to keep it to 10 to 12 weeks. So that's that's the thought process behind the strategy session, and it's obligation free. Um, there's lots of things that I offer and recommend that are not me. There are other things out there that may suit you better, depending on what it is that you need to improve. I have a pretty special area here, so. to move from here to there, then reach out to me. Schedule the, the chat, they're free. Uh, they don't cost anything. I am uh, available on most time zones. Sometimes we need to get a bit creative, um, but yeah, I'm here. You don't have to do this alone. Reach out and I can help you 